Color Guard, forward march. Please stand.
Color Guard, prepare to post the colors. Post the colors. Face the American flag. Present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Order arms, face the Christian flag, and the rest will go as the flags. Hand over heart. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Bible. By the grace of God, I will be Because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. Order arms. You may be seated. everyone to the Village Church place of worship. We are so happy to see everyone here on this bright Sabbath day. We would like to welcome all the regular members and the visitors as well. We'd like to welcome the online people that are watching from home or on Blue Mountain TV. We are so happy that all the Pathfinders are here today to, they're going to help with the church service. They're going to do some songs and do the sermon. We have Adventures and Discover Club that are going to do the help with the, um, the children's story and also have some memory verses and some special songs. Up here today, I have Ethan. He's an adventurer and he's in Sunbeam and he's going to say a memory verse. And I have Haley. And she's in Discovery Club, and she is an eager beaver. I am Becky Moss, and I teach um, there at the Discovery Club. And um, so Ethan is going to say the memory verse first. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. First Thessalonians 5.11. The ruler of peace tasted the water and now became wine. He did not know where it came from, but the servants who drew the water knew. The ruler of peace called the bridegroom, John 2, 9. Thank you, Ethan and Haley. And now we're going to have Mila Andros come up and say the prayer. I invite you to kneel with us. Dear Jesus, I'm, I'm thankful that um, we celebrate the Sabbath morning that Jesus rest, God rested after making a beautiful earth. Um, amen?
Everyone's gonna have to use that red one. I was a little worried. All right, we are so excited to be here with you guys today. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got a few pictures to show from things that we've done a little bit since January. Um, our students um, got to learn about our eager beavers. We're learning about some birds and different types of birds and how the males and female birds are different and the male birds are less colorful. So our little guys were learning about that. And then Pastor Reeser gets to come and help us with our physical award and we keep him on his toes. So he then has to help teach these guys how to toss a ball or whatever. So he keeps busy doing that. And he tells our Bible stories too. So we're so thankful to have him come and help us out every week. He's either gonna do something physical or he's gonna tell a Bible story. And our club really loves being able to have the pastor come and be present and they enjoy getting to know him through our club activities. Um, our baby birds, our youngest ones, they get to learn about God in fun ways. So they're learning about their shapes and whatnot and about creation, which is all of our groups. In January, our eager beavers got to learn about deer and a friend of mine had some deer sheds and they all wanted to know what they looked like if they were deer. So we gotta get some fun pictures of them pretending to be deer. Those things are pretty hardy. So um, we're just really having a lot of fun learning about God's creation through fun activities. Uh, my next slide, I believe, shows a fun day that we had here locally. We just got our two clubs together, Adventures and Discovery, went down to the gym and played because it was cold outside. So we really enjoy the youth center being able to use that for activities. And then after we were done with our games, the kids got to try on their roller skates. And they really enjoyed that because some of them had never done that before. And they had tons of fun being able to just play together get out and get their wiggles, and get to meet each other outside of club, which is so important to have that interaction outside of our club as well, so that we're still growing those relationships with each other and with Jesus. And um, I can't remember, do I have another slide on there? Or is that my end? That's my end. So we are headed to uh, Spokane here in a cut next Sunday to go to Adventure Fun Day. We are gonna hang out on the campus, at actually Spangle. We're going to UCA. And we're gonna hang out and make some bread, watch the acros, watch a dog show. And there's gonna be a lot of activities throughout our day. So we get together with clubs from all over. So we're gonna meet clubs from St. Mary's, Idaho up there. We're gonna see Spokane clubs. We're gonna see clubs from um, part of Oregon. They're gonna come. And we are just super excited to be meeting everybody and seeing friends that maybe we haven't seen since the last uh, fun day and we just get together and have fun on that day. And I'm super excited to be able to load our church van. So if you contribute to the church van fund, we use that as well. I load them up in there and I take them off and we get to just pretend like we're on, on a school field trip. So they really enjoy that. And I just thank you all so much for contributing your funds to children's ministries because that helps keep us going. It helps keep us reaching these little hearts for Christ and if you are interested in working with us, um, next year we're going to be doing it again. So I'll be up here again asking for lots of help. So pray about it. And um, I hope that God leads you to come and help us out. It's super easy. And they're not scary at all. My name is Stacy. I'm the adventure director, which is grades one through four. Um, this year we invested four new busy bees. And we also invested Pastor Reeser. Um, they have enjoyed the visit from the fire department. And other awards that they enjoyed doing were the Butterfly Award, Flowers, and the Spotter. And out in the hallway, you can see our board with some of their crafts that they have done. Our Sunbeam class was so big, we had to split them into two groups when we do indoor activities. And they each chose names. We have the Sensational Sunbeams and the Shining Sunbeams. They have learned quite a few awards this year. One of a favorite one was the Country Fun Award where they got to learn about another country called South Africa. And they actually did some research on it and learned what their different symbols were, some food items, different things like that. Um, their Fitness Fun Award, they got to run around outside 
and we had uh, one of the dads come and volunteer and help us out and teach them some skills about how to run and jog properly and stretching. We went over to teacher Tammy's house and they got to help out in her garden and earn the Gardener Award. We have no builders this year and for our helping hands, they are a lively group of girls and one boy and they always have a bunch of joyful laughter coming from their room. They are probably the loudest group, even though they're not the biggest group. Awards they earned were cooking, the talent, hygiene, and environmentalist. And the road safety award this year, we combined it with Busy Bees and the Sunbeams, and we had a College Place police officer come, brought his car, they brought their bicycles and they were able to learn how to drive on the road properly so that way when they get their driver's license at 16 they're ready to go and again thank you for your support and i also will be looking for more people to help out next year just like kimberly i will invite the children to come forward there's going to be a wonderful children's story right down here and so if the children would like to come forward and pick up the children's offering at this time, you can start making your way down. And I'll tell you a little bit about Pathfinder Club. It's a ministry for young people ages 10 or 5th grade and on up. Uh, con continuation of the Discovering Adventure Club. So we're learning and growing. Uh, we have, each class has a theme. For example, the Explorer class, the theme was the Book of Acts. So we learned about the early church and then how that parallel and there are similarities to the early Adventist church. And that was really interesting to learn about. Uh, we also have different honors that we work on, everything from auto mechanics to beekeeping, soap making, so many different things. The amazing thing to me is everything always points back to the creator. So for example, we made soap. Here's some of the soap that my boys made. It's really pretty. There are Bible verses about soap. I'm not making this up. You can look that up for yourself but everything that we do through some object lesson or through a Bible verse points us back to the Creator, which I think is great. We're going on a camp out here in a couple weeks. We're going to be going to Gillette, Wyoming for the big camporee, which thank you to the church body for contributing so much to that. Uh, very generous of you all to support that. Um, and it looks like, oh, and it looks like our story is getting ready down here. <laughs> so I will turn it over to Kimberly and the Adventure Club. Very good. Okay. Well, usually I wait just a little bit to make sure I got some kids up here because they're out doing an important job collecting some money. So I'll tell you a little background on this story. Um, we in a Discovery Club focus a lot on creation and the things that God made on each day. So I will be reading a story, and you may notice that there might be some artistic um, license made, but it is still biblically accurate so don't stone me after church we will have a lot of fun our club members you'll see they'll get to come and participate in creating an image for you and for the children to enjoy so this is purely for them this time they're almost here when they get here we'll start our story All right. All right. I think I got, okay, awesome. I even got some big kids down here. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to hope this picks up. I can be loud. Once there was no world, there were no people there were no animals, there were no hills and no trees, there were no sky and no sun. There was no world at all. It was very, 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 very dark. God said, 
I'll make a world. And so God made the world. He made the world long, long ago. God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God called the light day. He called the dark time night. God saw the, the light he had made. He said, This is good. Then God said, I'll make the skies. God made the sky. He made the sky blue and put white clouds to hold the rain. I'll make the seas and lakes, the rivers and dry land. All right. After that, he made dry land. God called the land earth. He put the land in some places. He put the seas and lakes and rivers in other places. God saw the water and the land. He said, This is good. Then God began to make things to grow on the earth. God said, Let there be grass. And there was grass. God said, Let there be trees. And there were trees. The grass and the trees made the earth green and bright. God said, Let there be plants and flowers. And there were plants and flowers. God made red flowers and white flowers and yellow flowers. God made plants and flowers of every shape and color. God saw that the flowers made the earth very pretty, and the plants grew good things to eat. God said, This is good. God said, Let there be lights to shine in the sky. God made the sun. coming because God said it would happen. God made the moon. Yeah, God said he made the stars too. God put them in the sky, the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to shine at night. God saw the sun, the moon and the stars. God said, "This is good." Then God said, let, let there be birds to fly in the sky. Let there be fish to swim in the sea, the lakes and the rivers. He made whales and every animal that lives in the water. Then God said, Let there be animals on the earth. He made animals that hop and animals that jump. He made animals that walk and animals that crawl. No, no. Have many little ones, he said to all the animals. Now the world was ready for people. God said, I'll make a man, and I'll make him like myself. I'll have him rule over the earth. So God made the first man. <laughs> God made him from clay. He took from the earth, breathed on him, and called him Adam. God made man a little like himself. God said to him, you shall rule over the earth and everything that walks or crawls, swims or flies. Then God planted a garden. It was a very pretty garden. He planted grass and trees and flowers in it. He gave the garden to Adam. It was Adam's home, and he was to look after it. God took all the animals to Adam. 
God said, give each, give each one a name. So Adam began to name the animals. God had made a little animal that he had called, that had a house on its back. Adam named it Turtle. God made a very tall animal with a long, long neck. Adam named it Giraffe. God made an animal with long ears and a little round tail. Adam named it Rabbit. God made a very big animal that looked like it had two tails. Adam named it Elephant. And Adam named the frog and the fox the horse and the bear. He named every animal that God had made. All the animals came in twos, but Adam was all alone. There were no other people. God said, It is not good for man to be alone. So God made a lady. He brought her to Adam. Adam named the lady Eve. God made Adam and Eve to live together. That's why people get married and have families. God blessed Adam and Eve and said, Have children and grandchildren. Let people fill the earth and rule it. In six days, God had made the world. Okay. In the seventh day, he rested from his work. God saw all the things he had made, and God said, This is very good. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this story. I hope you appreciated our rendition of creation, and have a great Sabbath as you enjoy the great outdoors. Happy Sabbath. Today is a time for the local church budget offering, and the verse is Leviticus 27:30. Every thigh of the land, whether of the sea of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. And giving the tithe and offerings is an act of adoration. We invite the deacons to stand up. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day and thank you for the blessings that we receive from your hands. Everything that we have comes from you and we are only stewards of the blessings that we receive. Please give, uh, help us to be generous and giving and supporting of this church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Jesus replied, love the Lord with the God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Happy Sabbath. Henry was 14 years old and was coming out of the school building when he saw his father. At first, Henry was worried that something had happened to his mom while he was at school. When he questioned his father, he was told that there was someone at home waiting to meet him. Once he got home, he went around to the back of the house. When they came around the corner, Henry saw an old man leaned up against the wall of the house. Henry's father said, go and say hello. Henry had no idea who the man was, but decided to obey his father. As Henry came closer, the man looked up and said, good afternoon, my, you have gotten so tall. That was when Henry realized that it was Gabriel. Gabriel used to work for his family. His job was to drag Henry to school every day. Henry had cried every step of the way because he was afraid of school. Later, once Henry had made some friends, he did not need help, Gabriel's help anymore. So Gabriel switched over to gardening and keeping the property nice. When Ga Gabriel wasn't working, he would tell Henry stories about being a butler to a British officer. One day, Gabriel told Henry the meaning of his name. Gabriel means devoted to God, he said. That was the first time Henry had heard of God, and he wanted to learn more. So Gabriel started to teach him about God, and now how much he loved him. Ever since that day, Henry had been looking for ways to serve others. Henry had been only 10 when Gabriel had moved away to Hawaii. Once he came back though, and they were talking with him, they went inside, sat down, and had dinner. During dinner, they had a good conversation about Gabriel's life in Hawaii and how long he would be staying in town. After dinner and goodbye hugs, Gabriel left. The next day, Henry's father received a phone call from one of Gabriel's friends. Gabriel had died in his sleep. Though this is a sad story, this story reminds me of the story of Deborah. Deborah was a judge when Sisera was oppressing Israel. The Lord had allowed Jabin, the king of Canaan, to send Sisera because Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord again. Sisera was in command of 900 chariots and had been oppressing 
Israel for about 20 years. One day, Deborah held court under a palm tree, and she told Barak, the commander of Israel, that the Lord wanted him to fight Sistra. Barak refused to go unless Deborah accompanied him, even though she had already told Barak that God would save Israel, not him. He still didn't believe her, so she went, though she warned them that it would be not because of her that they would win the battle. They defeated Sistra's army. During the battle, Sistra escaped and hid in a tent of a woman named Jael. Sistra told Jael to stand guard outside of the tent and make sure no one knew he was there. During the night, Jael snuck in to the tent and killed Sistra with a tent peg and hammer. During this period, women did not lead armies, but God made a way and Deborah followed. God put Deborah in situations where she could serve him and be friends and help those around her. When Deborah decided to hold court under the tree, she didn't stop and wonder, hmm, will this benefit me at all? Or, I don't like Barak very much, can I tell someone else? Nope, she just followed God and was a friend to Barak, even though he doubted God's power. Just like with Gabriel, Henry's encounter with Gabriel was a turning point in his life. It not only introduced him to God, but also inspired him to serve others. Gabriel's kindness and love for him made a significant impact on Henry's life, which he would always cherish. This story teaches us that sometimes the most influential people in our lives are the ones who show us kindness and love without any expectation. It also reminds us that we can be that person for someone else. And by doing so, we can make a difference in their lives. So let's strive to be kind, loving, and helpful to those around us, and be a friend to everyone who needs one. God, put people, God puts people in places so that they can bring other people to Christ. Gabriel was also a friend to Henry, even though it was hard. Hello, Village Church. So today I'm gonna be telling you a story that personally happened to me and my family. So one time, my family decided, hey, let's go to the mountains, north side of the mountains. And so we all decided to go. We didn't like think it was going to be like too cold, too snowy and stuff, so we decided to wear like light clothes, not too heavy. So we hopped, we hopped into our truck and then we drove all the way up there and then we there was some snow so we went up and up and up so but where we were driving it was like a narrow uh, hill and it, on the side of it was a cliff and the other side there was basically a, a wall of grass and dirt so we went up and up and up and then suddenly the truck got stuck i, I from what i remember my parents got out of the uh, truck, looked in front, and then realized something bad happened. So my parents told me, and my my parents told me and my sisters, you guys need to hop out of the truck, and then we need to slowly back the truck down because, like I said, uh, the the place where the truck was it was very narrow. We couldn't like turn the truck around to go down. We had to go backwards. And so when my sisters and I and my mother, we got out of the truck and we all prayed that we were, are going to be safe and nothing bad going to happen. So then my dad started backing up the truck. Everything was going pretty smooth and stuff, but problem was under the snow was ice. And every time my dad started to go down, the truck would just slide faster and faster. And so, and so um, we had to slowly down, go down and down the hill, and we were like pretty high up. 
And so, um, and so we, we were there like around four hours and stuff. And during that period of time, everything, uh, once again, everything was going great, but then it started to snow. Then it started to really snow. Then it basically turned into a blizzard. And that was not a fun time going down the mountain, steeply going down the mountain in the freezing cold weather, weather and having light clothes and the blizzard. It was not fun at all. But eventually, we, my father found a narrower uh, place where he could finally b turn around the truck. So, but, we, but my mother and my sisters and I, we still stayed outside of the truck, so if anything bad happened, we wouldn't die. And so, <laughs> only my father would. <laughs> and, but, but, okay, whatever. Uh, so what, uh, um, we managed, my dad managed to back up the truck very hard, it was like very hard to back it around. And so, we managed to get down, and once we got, uh, down and stuff, we were very thankful that God helped us survive in the times that uh, my family had trouble. And this relates to a story in the book of the Bible, in the Old Testament, Judges 6 to 8. It, it talks about Gideon, and most and Gideon was in the Israelites, and the Israelites were attacked by these people called the Midianites. The Midianites, they weren't good. They would uh, destroy crops, steal stuff, break stuff. And so eventually, uh, one time when the Midianites, they attacked Israel. And when Israel went in the cave, they, uh, they prayed to God, hey, can you please help us? Can you please help us? But God said, why should I help you? You haven't done anything to us. Because during the time, um, the Israelites, the Israelites, they, um, they were worshiping another god, Baal, which is not actually real. And so God was kind of like, okay, I'll help you. And so then God sent a, mes a messenger to, of uh, a messenger or an angel to this guy named Gideon. Gideon was not exactly well known because his tribe in the Israelites, it was pretty low. So the angel, so Gideon did not know the angel at all and, it kinda, and the angel kind of looked like a person. It wasn't like light and stuff. And so Gideon was, so then the angel told Gideon, God exists, God is great. And uh, Gideon said, if God actually exists, then do a mir do something awesome or a miracle to show me that you're actually a messenger of God or an angel. So the angel told Gideon to make some food. Gideon made some food and placed it on a rock. And the angel had a big staff, and all the angel did was put the staff next to the food, and the food lit up and dissolved all away. And then Gideon was like, whoa, that's impressive. I, uh, whoa. And so then when the angel left, Gideon went to bed. And then God said to him in his sleep, I want you to go to the altar of Baal, which the Israelites were worshiping. And I want you to destroy it so they would stop worshiping. Gideon was kind of very scared at first. He, he was like, no, I, can't, I don't want to do that. They're going to kill me. They're going to do this to me. But eventually he's like, okay, I'm going to go. And I'm going to destroy it. So he went and he destroyed it. And when the Israelites found out who it was, they went to what's called Gideon's father. And they said, hey, I want to kill your son because he destroyed our altar. Uh, Gideon's father, he said, if Baal actually exists, why doesn't he just uh, kill or punish Gideon himself? Does, the Israelites thought about it and they're like, oh yeah, he is our God, he can't do that. So then they left them alone. And that's honestly the point from Gideon being scared to him destroying um, destroying the altar. That's what I'm going to be uh, like. That's the main point of it. 
because I was scared when we got stuck up there, and Gideon was scared when uh, he got uh, in that situation to destroy the altar. But both of us, we basically realized we have to do this, and then it'll be very nice for us. And so, I'm gonna be, and so, that's how we were a servant to God and a friend to man. Gideon served to God as in destroying the altar, how God kind of said to him. And I was a servant to God because I read the Bible and um, I did stuff that I was afraid about, but I realized it was good. So then, so then I'm going to now tell you a Bible verse of kind of what happened. It's Psalm thir chapter 34, verses 19 to 20. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous, not one of them is broken. If we let him, God will guide us in the direction of our lives. Sometimes he leads us in a whole new direction. When we choose to follow his path, though, we serve him. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, um, thank you for letting us all come here today to worship and praise you. Please help my words to be understood by the people. In your name. Every Wednesday evening at Pathfinders, at the beginning of the meeting, we recite the pledge in law. Part of the pledge really stands out to me. It goes like this. I will be a servant of God and a friend to man. But how do I do that? Once there was a boy whose name was Paul Brand. His father was a missionary doctor, and they lived in the Kohli Mountains of India. But Paul hated living there with the blood infections, and diseased people all around. Paul especially didn't want to become a missionary doctor like his father had been. So when he returned to England, he decided to study to become a builder and an architect. Around the age of 18, right before he headed off to college, Paul's father died. When he got to college, he was offered a basic medical class. And after praying about the opportunity, he decided to take it. Paul was amazed by the class and impressed to become a doctor. When he was young, he had also determined to never go back to the Kohli Mountains, but God changed his heart. And after finishing his degree, Paul decided to return to India and to stay there as a missionary and a doctor to the people. He also used his earlier architectural training to build several medical and rehabilitation campuses for the lepers and their families. Paul showed us what it means to be a servant of God and a friend to man. But to serve God, we have to trust God. A long time ago in Russia, there was a family. There was a mom and a dad and a grandma and three little kids. Sadly, the father was killed, and shortly after, the mother died of terrible sickness. That left grand Grandma Anastasia with the three little kids. One day, Anastasia looked into the cupboard and found only two crusts of bread left. She was very sad, and after they ate the two crusts for lunch, the little girl asked if they could pray for food for dinner. So they prayed, not only for that, but for a whole big loaf of bread. Supper time came and went, and there was still no food. Anastasia, feeling like God hadn't answered their prayer, began getting the children ready for bed. She didn't sharpen the knife and decided never to do so again, in which ignoring the Russian customs. Suddenly, the door opened and in came a close friend. With him, he brought a big loaf of bread. After they had eaten, Anastasia thanked the Lord for his blessings. She sharpened the knife and decided to always sharpen the knife as an act of trust that God would provide. Anastasia learned that to be a servant of God means you have to trust him, even when he doesn't answer right away. Sometimes we have to wait a very long time for his answer. 
Once there was a man who had two wives. One of the wives had a lot of kids, but the other one, whose name was Hannah, had none, and she was very, very sad. So when they traveled to Shiloh for their yearly visit to the temple, Hannah prayed, and while she prayed, the priest came up to her. Because she said no words out loud, she thought that he, she was, he thought that she was drunk. But she exclaimed, I am not drunk, but I am upset. Then the priest said, Whatever you have asked before the Lord, you shall have. Around the same time the next year, a child was born to her, and when he was of age, his mother took him to live at the temple, because she had promised God that she would give the child back to him as a sign of her thankfulness. As Paul Brand found out, God has a plan for us. Like Anastasia realized, we should always be ready even if God delays his answers. And like Hannah, when God keeps his promises, we can keep ours too. That is what it means to be a servant of God and a friend to man. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for letting me come here and speak today. Please help the people to have a safe drive home and have a wonderful Sabbath afternoon. Amen. Okay. Well, I first, I want to thank Bailey, Nick, and Emmeline for sharing. That was really awesome this morning. Um, as you might have gathered, we do have a theme, and that theme comes from the last few phrases of our Pathfinder Pledge, and they say, I will be a servant of God and a friend to man. Now, my three friends, they shared some life experiences and some Bible characters that used those phrases and applied it to their lives, and now I will be attempting to wrap it all together. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to first thank you for this opportunity that our clubs have to share with our church congregation this morning. It's really cool to be able to show them what we've been doing and to just share our, um, our love for you with them. Please be with me as I share this morning. Please let the words that come out of my mouth to be from you and not from me. Amen. Okay, so be a servant of God and be a friend to man. Now, you might say that these are two really different concepts that actually have nothing to do with each other, and they're just completely different, but that's not true. They have so much to do with each other, they just go hand in hand, and you can't have one without the other. They wrap up what our goals are in Pathfinders, but they also summarize what the basic Christian tries to do, and Jesus explains it in the New Testament when he shares the two greatest commandments. So why don't we go there, Matthew chapter 22. So here we have the Sadducees and they are trying to trap Jesus in, in, his, in his words and they're failing miserably at it. And so the Pharisees try their hand and one who is a lawyer, a lawyer he says, teacher, which is the greatest commandments in the law? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So there we have it. We have God's expectation laid out for us in two sentences. To first love God and to second love others. And in Pathfinders we get a little bit more specific with that. We say to serve God and to be a friend to others. So what do we mean when we say, be a servant of God? Well, I mean, there's the obvious one, to be a servant of God, hence the phrase. But we can also go a little bit deeper with that. Um, it can mean to voluntarily set aside your personal desires and your wants in order to love and obey the will of God. A servant of God knows who God is and actively puts forth an effort to grow in that relationship with him. A servant of God will seek God in everything that they do in all aspects of their life. As a servant of God, your primary goal is to honor God in all that you do. So Bailey talked about how Hannah, the mother of Samuel, did this. She endured a great hardship. She was childless. She couldn't have kids. And that was really hard, especially for that era. But through her anguish, she poured her heart out to God and then once she encountered Eli, once she left there, that all went away. It says in 1 Samuel that 
she went on her way and she ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Well, yeah, because she was thrilled. She was going to have a kid. She wasn't able to, and now God gave her a gift. She is going to be able to have the child that she has longed for for so long. Like, that's really cool. You would think that she would want to keep that child forever, right? But she doesn't. As soon as she gives birth to Samuel, she tells her husband that once he's weaned, I'm going to give him back to God. That's pretty crazy. She had pride for this kid, and now she's giving it back. She's going to send it away. Like, why would she do that? Well, she was so grateful to God and what he did in her life. She was so devoted to honoring God with the gift that he had given her that she was willing to give up Samuel and give him back to God so that Samuel could honor God and serve God for the rest of his life, which he does. But I imagine that Hannah, she had to have been a pretty focused person in order to do this. Because if she had chose to focus on the fact that I'm giving my kid up, I'm not going to be able to raise him, I'm only going to see him once in a while, I'm not going to be able to tell him all the things I want to tell him and teach him all the things I want to teach him. If she had chosen to focus on that, I do not think she could have done what she did. So if she wasn't focusing on that part of it, then she had to have been focusing on the God, God part of it. She had to have been focusing on the miracle that God had done in her life. So I think that Hannah had to be a pretty focused person. And focus, it, focus has a lot to do with our relationship with God. It's kind of like being in a marching band. There was a young boy, his name was Mike, and Mike played the trumpet. And Mike, he wanted to be in his school's marching band so bad. And so when the time came when he got into the right grade, he took up his trumpet and he marched in there and he was like, I am joining marching band. And okay, so he was telling this to the director, the director of the marching band, he liked to be called the general. He felt it gave a little sense of authority to him. And so Mike walked up to the general and was like, oh, I want to be in marching band. And the general was like, okay, cool. But you have to do two things. And Mike was like, well, I can do two things. And the general was like, mm -hmm. really listen to what I'm going to say here. So yeah, I'll need you to play your trumpet, but I need you to do two other things too. When you're marching, when we're going down the road in a parade or something, you need to do two things. You need to first keep your eyes in front of you. And second, you need to be listening for my commands at all times. Now, Mike, he really didn't care. He was just excited that he was in marching band. And so, you know, he was like, okay, whatever. And so they went on. And so the next day, they were learning how to march. Now, Mike, he was doing pretty good at it. He could stay on the correct foot. He knew which way was left and which way was right. He had no problem. And so, because he had no problem doing this, he started looking at the other kids. And he started noticing that the kid next to him was on the wrong foot. And they're, they're marching, and he, he's just not with, with it. He's not on it. So he, he was like, hey, hey, kid, kid, you're on the wrong foot. The problem is, is that Mike didn't realize that the general had called halt. And so then Mike as any person would do when they're still walking and the person in front of them stopped. He ran into the person in front of them and that person fell and it kind of created a domino effect and like everybody just kind of like fell. Now that's really obvious, right? Kind of hard to cover that one up. And so as Mike is looking around and he's like, I did this, <laughs> this, is, this is me. He, he caught the eye of the director, the, the general. And he saw such a great look of disappointment in his eyes. And then Mike remembered, oh, I was supposed to be doing two things. And I didn't do either of those two things. Now, because of Mike's mistake, because he caused the whole team to stumble, the general made them go back to the beginning and start over again. 
And now the rest of the marching band wasn't real thrilled with Mike when that happened. Because of Mike's mistake, he caused the whole group to stumble. Now, if Mike hadn't done that, if he had been obeying and doing the two things that he was told to do, it would have gone a whole lot better for the whole team, not just him. And we see that's what Deborah did when Emmeline was talking. Deborah, she did what God asked her to do. That's probably why she was the judge at the time, is because she did what God told her to do. And God told her, hey, go get Barak and go tell him to fight a battle. And I mean, she ended up going with him too, but they won that battle and it resulted in Israel having 40 years of peace, which was kind of rare for them. And so because of Deborah's obedience to God, Israel got this 40 years of peace. It's like a cause and effect situation. Because she did this because she loved God, she was being a friend to man. This whole thing is cause and effect. When you are really devoted to God and lovingly serving him, you will naturally be drawn towards loving others. When you love God the most, you will be loving others the best and vice versa. The most loving thing you can do for others is to love God. And we saw that with Mike in the marching band too. If he had been focused while marching, if he had been loving God, he wouldn't have caused the whole team to mess up or he would have been loving others. Now, loving others is something that's really hard. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience in this. It's really, really hard. But, I mean, you just got to do it. It's just something that you have to do because God tells you to do it. And no, it's not going to come easy. And no, you're going to really dislike it at times. But you know what? You just got to suck it up and do it because God tells you to do it. But also, love is not something that we entirely understand. And because of that, we're going to mess up. It's a guarantee. Because we don't fully understand and comprehend the concept of love, you will mess up. But it is also guaranteed that God will help you. In 2 Corinthians 4, Paul writes, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. So this treasure that's being talked about here is the gospel, the good news that Christ died to save us because he loves us, and God gave that to us, the idiot humans here on earth, to basically prove that, no, we can't do this without God. This is all God. The ability to love is not something that you can do on your own. The ability to love comes from only God. It goes on to say, we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. This will not come easy. You will be struck down. You will be persecuted. You will be in despair. You will be hard plexed, but you will not be crushed. We saw that with Nick when he was sharing his story and Gideon's story, is that, yeah, you get scared, you get stressed out, but God will be there. God will help you. Paul goes on to write, we always carry around in our bodies the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be shown in our bodies. So if we take the gift that God gives us, if we take the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross because he loves us, if we take that and we really invest in it and if we put our whole heart into it, it will shine through us. The love of God will shine through us in everything that we do. If you truly love God, with everything inside of you, and if you are actively pursuing a relationship with him, and if you are trying your hardest to love others and to serve them and to help them in what they need, then all, all the stress and all the anxiety and all the worry that we have about whether or not you're doing life right, all of that should mean nothing because God tells you to do just two things. He tells you to first love him and to second love others. He tells you to be a servant of God, and he tells you to be a friend to man. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, 
You are pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you for the examples that you give us in the Bible. Thank you for the verses and the texts that you share with us, that you put on our hearts. Thank you for giving us instructions on how to live life here. Please help us in all that we do to truly put you first and to truly be a friend to others. Be with us as we go out today. And Lord, please, please, please come soon. We love you so much. Amen.